All right, so I know I said the last way too early AFL trade video thing would be the last one I'd do, and then I'd move on to a, a new title and all of that type of stuff, right? Well, it turns out I was I was I was lying apparently because I'm here to confirm that this will be the last one, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I know I said in the last video, but this will be the biggest. This will be the best. This will be as big as someone that you see on my 600 pound life or as big as what our parents claimed the Big Mac was actually like in the 80s. So I figure without further ado, let's just get straight into it with one that came out the other day that I literally, I, I can believe it because every time I watch this guy, I want to shoot garlic aioli sauce out of my private parts onto my screen. But a report being said that Mac Andrew could be getting a contract worth 12 to $15 million over eight years from Victorian clubs, why I had already scheduled this video and created the thumbnail, all this type of stuff. And I originally spoke about Mac Andrew like I expected him to re-sign. And wouldn't you know, that's exactly what he did, signing a massive deal with the Gold Coast Sun. So I just thought, you know, future Jordan would come in here and kind of talk over myself because, yeah, look, let's be honest here, he always wanted to stay at Gold Coast. and. He was never going to be wanting to go, even though Victorian clubs were out there apparently willing to offer like 10 year, $15 million deals, all this type of stuff. Again, I guess left ever do is the rest of the video. We also just got a bunch of Western Bulldogs news over the last couple of days, which is legitimately really crazy to think. Again, Bailey Smith did just request a trade, a move that we kind of all expected by the time he actually did request a trade he didn't actually nominate a club but i think we all know even though hawthorne and collingwood are really really interested and i think that st kilda might actually come late from reports i think geelong are by far in the box seat and i expect him to get done to geelong pretty easily again unfortunately for bulldogs fans with what they're saying the trade value is on sen and whatnot it's probably just going to be like a first round pick from Geelong and maybe a future later pick or something like that to get, to get this deal done. I think he's probably worth more, but considering we haven't seen him play in over a year and he kind of really wants out, he's a free agent and whatnot. I don't really know how much arguing there is going to be uh, with, with the dogs in Geelong right there. I think, yeah, he should get done quite comfortably. We also got another trade request. We got Jack McRae requesting a trade from the Dogs. This is one I definitely didn't see coming. I legitimately thought that he would have been one of those guys who just stays at the Dogs and, and unfortunately doesn't get played how I think he should under Luke Beveridge. I don't think Luke Beveridge is really that good of a coach. This is no secret. I mean, I think he's got one year left on his deal. It'll probably be a do or die year for him at this rate but Jack McRae again where will he go we are hearing I believe from uh, Tom Morris as well that St Kilda are interested in Jack McRae again they've been looking for another inside mid to add to this team and I honestly believe you could probably get him pretty cheap you could probably get him for a second round pick which I think the Saints would actually be willing to part ways with again they're gonna have most likely two first round picks for battle and their original pick. Again, it's being said that they're not going to get that top 10 pick for Josh Battle, which does suck for them. Uh, apparently, it will be end of first round, I believe. So, you know, that hurts, but at least you still get a first round pick for him. I think they will part ways with the second round pick here for Jack McRae. Take the first round picks into the draft, hopefully for them. Again, they are linked to Dan Schuston. What's going to go on with him or not? No one really knows. I think people at SCN still think he's going to go but he did commit to Port Adelaide the other day. So we'll have to see there. And then, of course, we've got the Caleb Daniel situation. Rumors have been saying for a while now, Caleb Daniel is also going to request a trade if the interest is there. Who is going to go for Caleb Daniel? I'm not too sure. He's really regressed as a player. And because of his height uh, being like 165 or whatever, it's pretty hard for him to go out there and defend anything that's not a fucking fly so i don't know who he gets done to maybe adelaide uh could be looking for a guy like him again i think he's actually from south australia so that could make sense again realistic thing is you're probably going to get caleb daniel for i think pretty cheap so 
I don't expect that deal to be too hard to get done, but realistic thing is the dogs are going to have a ton of picks in this year's draft, but they're probably just going to be played in the VFL with Riley Sanders because Beveridge just doesn't seem to be that guy. Again, earlier on, I did mention that this was going to be the biggest way too early trade video, and I, of course, wasn't lying. For the future of this video now, I will be showing you a ton of clips and whatnot from my other AFL way too early trade videos. Again, a lot of them you guys probably haven't seen. I've made literally so many of these at this point over like the last month. So obviously I will be showing you guys all the latest AFL trade news from the last couple of weeks to keep you guys all updated before I move on to what I'm thinking of titling this now, latest AFL trade news and updates. So I think that's going to be the future of this video. We'll have to wait and see, but a ton more of them will obviously be coming out because I guess it's not way too early trade news anymore. Again, the trade period is like literally a month away. So uh, I guess without further ado, here it is. A recent report actually came out that said Jay Clark has reported that Richmond could be interested in trading for Elijah Sardis from Essendon. The former top five pick has been dominating the VFL, but is a long way down the pecking order in the stacked Bombers midfield list. Sardis, however, signed a two-year extension at the start of the year till the end of 2026. He appears quite happy at Essendon and given the contract, would be very unlikely to want to leave or for the Bombers to trade him. Again, I also heard there was a rumor he was a Richmond fan as a kid. I'm not completely sure if that's true even if that really means anything i mean it's usually what team kind of holds up the bigger bag of money at the end of the day right or has the best looking aflw players torano i know why you came to richmond it's not because you thought we were going to win a flag it's because we got monique conti on our fucking team and look if i was you i would have done the same thing but this would obviously be a very good move for the tigers a very bad move for Essendon because if history has taught us anything, a young unproven player who was a former top 10 pick, when he is to get traded to another team, the other team never gets the full value that he is actually worth. Again, we don't know if he is going to be a good player in the league. He was taken at pick five, but obviously, he hasn't played like a pick five just yet. And there's no way in hell any team would give up a top 10 pick for a bloke who's been in the league two years and hasn't played that much football. These type of players always tend to go for like early second round picks to late second round picks. Again, we saw Liam Henry literally like a year ago was only in a couple years of his Dockers career, a top 10 pick, and he was traded for like, I think a second round pick. And he has proven a lot more than Elijah Sardis. I also think that Richmond are going to be interested in potentially trying to trade for Ben Hobbs. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually talked to both of those guys and said, look, you're obviously behind a bunch of players. Essendon have a great core midfield of like eight guys. They still haven't traded Dylan Shield. He's also still getting games over you guys. We, we want to bring one of you guys in to come and help our young core. Again, if Richmond could trade for Elijah Sardis and offer up a second round pick that's like pick 20 to 22, I would 100% do that if I was the Tigers. If I was the Bombers, well, you got to know and you got to think, is he, is he going to be the guy we think he is? If not, we can cash in and at least get a decent pick back for him or we can hold on to him. And then if we hold on to him in two years, he's either gonna be a consistent 22 or we're gonna be trading him for pick 50 or delisting him for nothing. That's the reality that Essendon have to face. And that's also a risk that Richmond have to take on potentially trading away a good second round pick for an unproven player who was two years into his career. Rumors say that Richmond are not only interested in Elijah Sardis, but could be very interested in Ben Hobbs. Again, funny that I actually talked about that in that video because a recent report is saying that rivals are keeping tabs on the Essendon midfielder. Out of favor, Essendon midfielder Ben Hobbs is reportedly being eyed off by rival clubs. Hobbs, who has featured in 10 games throughout 2024, has struggled to cement his spot 
Who the fuck is trying to message me? You cock blocking my video. Hobbs has struggled to cement his spot in the Bombers' side as the emergence of Jai Coldwell and Sam Durham has seen them leapfrog him. Again, Essendon's midfield is one of the weirdest things at the moment right now because they have these ton of really good midfielders and for so long they've just lacked that star power in there. But with the rise of, you know, Durham and obviously Jai Coldwell, you're starting to see that star power truly answer. Again, we need to start seeing it more from the back line and the forward line, but there definitely are some stars in that midfield now. And it's really funny because over the last couple of drafts, they've seen the midfield as an absolute weakness when there are some games where it's actually their strongest part now. You've got Zach Merritt, Durham, Coldwell, Stringer from time to time, Darcy Parrish when he's not injured with 888 different things, Dylan Shill, all of these guys doing their things. You've got the wingmen they're expanding, experimenting with like Hind. And then you've got the two guys, Elijah Sardis and Ben Hobbs, who just haven't been able to crack into the team because there's like nine guys in favor of them. And it's really difficult for them because I think they came in expecting to have like first crack and not only have they not been able to prove themselves, but it just hasn't worked out. Elijah Sardis kind of got moved straight away to the wing when he became a bomber. And now they've got about four guys they'd rather rotate through there than him. Ben Hobbs straight away came in as an inside midfielder and has just really, really struggled to cement his spot. We know the Richmond Tigers right now are looking for some speed desperately in that midfield. They have one of the slowest midfields I have ever seen in league history. Jacob Hopper, Tim Taranto, and Dion Prestia, when those three blokes are in that center bounce together, it's like sometimes watching three fucking turtles run to the ball while you've got all of these like new and improved speedsters running in in the league. You got like Connor Rosie, Zach Butters, Nick Dacos, all of these dudes who are fast as fuck and the modern footballers. The Richmond midfielders just can't keep up. It's pretty much actually like the plot of Cars 3. Not that I think that's a good movie, but if any of you have seen it, Lightning McQueen is like the old fashioned, you know, race car that was good five years ago. But now there's this new modern day built car who's basically just touching him without consent on the race course. And that's basically what every midfield is doing to Richmond's. Not only do Richmond have no flexibility in there, they've got no speed. Again, I think Elijah Sardis would actually be a cool option for Richmond. He seems to be that more silkier player who could come in and play a bit more of that outside role to the already inside bulls that the Tigers have there. I just don't know if Ben Hobbs is the option for Richmond. And you can tell that they are the rival club most likely who are definitely keeping an eye on him and are probably doing their research right now to find out if Hobbs is the missing piece for them. I personally don't think he really is. I mean, they had the pick over Ben Hobbs and Josh Gibkiss a couple years ago, and they took Josh Gibkiss, and even though he's had like 18 broken backs, pussies, cracks, whatever the fuck he's always injured with, I still think they definitely made the right move there because in the short amount that we've seen of Josh Gibkiss, especially in the two games he played in 2024, he was absolutely incredible and looked like a generational player, while Ben Hobbs really hasn't shown anything yet. Some more trade requests. We do have Tom Barras requesting a trade to Hawthorne. Again, I previously made a video on this, which actually got quite a fair amount of views. Again, Hawk Bowl is super popular right now, and the Hawthorne fans have come out in numbers to support yours truly, probably more their club. I don't think they care about me at all. And you know what? That's fair enough. But there was actually a lot of you guys in the comments section saying that Tom Barras is not worth a first round pick. And look, I couldn't disagree with that anymore. And the fact is, even though I couldn't disagree with that anymore, there's also reports and sources going out there right now that West Coast are not going to be doing this trade at all unless that first round pick is involved and apparently it is the starting point of the trade so if you're a hawks fan and you think that tom barras is not worth the first round pick i think it's going to be extra sad to probably realize that i think they're actually going to have to trade up one or two more pieces to add to this uh puzzle 
especially if the leaks and rumors and reports are actually true again in my opinion i think it should just be a first round pick which i think at the time of making this video is like 12 or whatever to hawthorne again that will probably become 13 or 14 later on due to the fact that brisbane have a father-son player in levi ashcroft coming in and again the saints josh battle his contract to hawthorne as well is going to be super high ended apparently so again that will be another top 10 pick in compensation to the saints so in reality this could be pick 14 or 15 for tom barass and i think it does kind of suck for west coast that you lose one of your better players just for pick 15 again it is very good for hawthorne i don't think people realize that when tom barass is on he is one of the best like key defenders in the game Again, with where his career is going, the injuries and whatnot, I think he does belong as probably like that second or third uh, key defender on an AFL team. The reality is Hawthorne are bringing in Josh Battle as well. And Josh Battle was one of those guys who I thought would have been a second or third key on some team. Has ended up showing he can easily by far be one of the best key defenders in the game. Again, he has had... A phenomenal season he has definitely earned the pay that he's about to get and i think having him sicily and barras is like your main three key defenders down there sicily being like the the guy who can play smaller tall and as the spare is yeah that's pretty cool again if i was a hawthorne fan i'd be having a fucking orgasm at my screen right now it's pretty tough but again west coast pick 15 he's a top five player for you guys but they need to do a rebuild they are looking to bring in picks and assets and whatnot and the reality is that pick 15 is probably going to go to richmond for like liam baker and maybe a, a third round pick that they have and if you do do that trade that's still a, a bonus because liam baker's like three years younger than barras he is way more injury free and at, at the time of what their team is desperately needing they could really use an elite halfback and a guy who can chip in in the midfield and, of course, ball use. They don't really have a whole lot of that right now. And I think Liam Baker coming in, again, could be straight away a vice captain for them. He was a vice captain at Richmond. Uh, I don't think he'll be a future captain, but also just bring in another leader to their team. That makes a lot of sense. And at least you're getting a guy who you know you're going to play full-time while Barras is had his injury issues for West Coast. So how this is all going to go, if, if the Liam Baker thing, that might not even happen. Uh, he's linked to Freo as well. But I think, yeah, this deal will get done quite comfortably. Com comfortably? Comfortably? The fuck am I trying to say? Tom Barras to Hawthorne, I think, gets done pretty easily. And I would say just their first round pick should be enough just to make this deal work. Again, another one we've seen is uh, apparently Ivan Soldo is potentially on the move. I watch on Ivan Soldo at Port Adelaide this trade period. The Ruckman has had a level of disenchantment one season into his career at the power. He's battled a knee injury and was dropped for round 15 and now lost his spot to Jordan Sweet. Again, I don't know if this is technically true. This could be a lot of bullshit. But you know how there's those guys who call up on SCN and they're like, I heard this and that, take it to the bank. Like only one third of the time are they true. But some people just know. One caller did actually call up and say that take this to the bank. St. Kilda will be very interested in Ivan Soldo and would try and trade for him. This would kind of make sense considering for the last couple of years, St. Kilda have tried to have two Ruckman in their team. We know even though Royal Marshall is one of the best Ruckman in the game, when he plays key forward, he's also one of the best key forwards in the game. It's just unfortunate he hasn't been able to find the perfect mix. In reality though, if you do get Ivan Soldo, you can play Marshall as a 70% key forward to help out Max King and have two really good options down there. Again, they've been trying to do this. They had Tom Campbell play like bolt games for St. Kilda for the last couple years. This doesn't fucking surprise me at all. They also offered, I don't know why I've forgotten his name, but the Ruckman from Essendon, before he even played a game, they offered him a four-year deal. Uh, so there's a ton to go off of this. I still think Ivan Soldo will stay at Port because they gave up a future second to get him. 
which has ended up being an okay pick. Ivan Soldo would still technically be like the best backup Ruckman in the game then on. So they're probably going to try and keep him to that contract, especially if Jordan Sweet were to get injured, which could very well happen. Or Ivan Soldo just hits form again and Jordan Sweet just plays average games. They could maybe do a swap there. But I wouldn't be surprised if St. Kilda were like, we'll give you a future second and a future fourth or something. Like the same deal Richmond got back. They were like, we'll do that for Soldo. And Port were like, yeah, maybe right. And then just went and signed some veteran Ruckman and free agency or even tried to go out and draft one. So there's definitely a lot going on there. St. Kilda also just delisted uh, Seb Ross, who is a two-time best and fairest for them. Reality is Seb Ross should probably get another contract in another club. I know he's not really that good anymore. An inside midfielder averaging 16 and a half disposals a game. He's not that great, but I think he was like the sub for a couple of them. One team I think who could actually really use Seb Ross does happen to be Collingwood. I mean, reality is Collingwood are desperate for depth. As I mentioned in the previous video, Richards and Noble both requested a trade. McRae hasn't come through on the VFL. They don't have their first round pick. Tom Mitchell and whatnot are always injured. Pendlebury's going to be like 48 next year. Sidebottom's going to be like 42. They're probably going to need someone else. Seb Ross is a free dude. And if you get him back to his consistent footy, he could maybe average you like 18 disposals to 20 disposals a game and has shown the willingness to be able to play sub. So very well could also happen. Now, obviously, if we're going to talk about trade requests, we got to talk about the team who has basically had everyone and their dad request a trade from them and that's the richmond football club and look i'm a massive richmond fan i bleed yellow and black right but if i was on this richmond team somehow i feel like i probably would have somehow requested a trade because the guys you think bleed yellow and black on this tigers team apparently do not because we've seen liam baker who's one of the most fucking richmond players that i've been able to watch in feast my eyes over has just requested a trade to western australia he actually hasn't picked if it's Fremantle or west coast yet and then you've got the other one daniel rioli like the rioli name is so richmond you know the one of the greatest ever indigenous players morris rioli a richmond tiger then you got daniel rioli a richmond tiger morris rioli jr a richmond tiger and now you've got daniel requesting a trade to the Gold Coast Suns where he will officially go and play with Dimmer again or play for Dimmer. I can't imagine 55-year-old Dimmer getting out on the park. It'd be a fun thing to watch again. That guy would fucking beat the shit out of you. If you, if you turned your back, he was probably going to king hit you. And then the one I think we kind of thought was if he was going to leave was going to be a couple years ago and just didn't, stayed really loyal to the Tigers and pretty much became their best player. Shay Bolton, who has officially requested a trade uh, to just Western Australia, it seems like. Again, we know he's going to be going to Fremantle, though. That's like 100% of a lock, really. We know this is also for family reasons, like Liam Baker. Daniel Rioli is just, I don't think, really was family reasons. He just wanted to win more than two fucking games in a year. And look, I don't blame him. Richmond will be lucky to win two games next year. We might just win one. But yeah, obviously this is crazy news uh, for the Tigers. It's news that we kind of all expected though. I think the most interesting part about all of this does actually happen to be the fact that Liam Baker, at the time of making this video, this could all change when it's out, um, hasn't actually picked a WA team. In fact, when the Richmond list manager was actually talking about them on the website, he described the uh, the trade you know request being a situation where Richmond have suitors. So this could either way be to Fremantle versus West Coast. If I had to pick who I think Liam Baker will ultimately be traded to, I think Baker will become a West Coast Eagle. Uh, I just think that they could really use him. They could really use a nice, polishable player on their team who can not only play midfield, but half back. Again, there's some smaller things I'd like to start off with first. Again, Alex Neil Bullen. We know he recently requested a trade from Melbourne. He did request a trade to South Australia uh, for family reasons. 
Uh, definitely not because apparently everyone in Melbourne wants to leave. Shout out Cozzy Pickett. Shout out Christian Petrarca. Shout out Adam Tomlinson, who we're going to talk about in a second. But Alex Neil Bullen has officially nominated the Melbourne... What the fuck? I had one job, man. Alex Neil Bullen has officially nominated the Adelaide Football Club. Again, we kind of all knew this was happening. Port Adelaide have their focus on the 612... Uh, different GWS players they are going after. Again, I still think they're going to be looking at Cozzy Pickett, even though there's rumors he's picked someone else again. More later on in the video about that. But yeah, Neil Bullen to Adelaide makes a ton of sense. They have notoriously not been the greatest drafting team. I mean, Adelaide fans will tell you that out of anyone, right? In the last couple of years, they just unfortunately haven't been. All they've been good at is trading for a bunch of really good players like Jordan Dawson, Isaac Rankin, and now Neil Bullen, who's been one of the most underrated players in the game for way too long. Josh Battle has officially, essentially, joined Hawthorne. Uh, it's being said that he will be leaving the Saints and will move for the Hawks as an unrestricted free agent. Again, at the time making this video, it's kind of yet to know uh, what pick that will be. If it's front-loaded, which we all know it possibly could be, this could genuinely be a top 10 pick in compensation for St. Kilda. If it's not front loaded and it's just the 800 that's rumored per year for him, it will probably be an end of first round pick, early second round pick selection uh, for the Saints. So they're, they're definitely obviously hoping they do what Essendon did with Mackay and basically pay this dude their whole fucking salary in their first year. It's also being said that Collingwood are interested in midfielder Alex Davies from Gold Coast. Again, a player I think the Tigers should look at, and I've been saying this for a minute now, Collingwood have kind of just swooped in and have, looks like they're going to try and pull him away from Gold Coast again. I believe he's actually from up in Queensland, so that's going to be interesting to see if they can bring him down. Again, he's kind of like a 23rd to 26th man for the Suns. He's either just in the team or either just out of the team, and I think he's going to want to come into a club and play consistent football, and we know with Collingwood having a bunch of injuries as of late. Again, players like Sidebottom and Scott Pendlebury turning 47 years old. They're going to be looking for a lot of midfield depth very, very shortly. And Alex Davies is, I think, a player who would essentially jump straight into that. And you could probably get him for an end of second round pick or so, which I think the Gold Coast Suns would part ways with Alex Davies to try and get. We've also got Adam Tomlinson uh, getting a ton of interest from other teams. Again, from what I've heard, the Saints are the team who are big on Adam Tomlinson. This is due to the fact that Josh Battle is leaving them. They want to bring in a cheap replacement to try and get this going. Again, if this does become a trade situation, which it might because I'm sure St. Kilda won't want to interfere with their again, compensation. Could you imagine the AFL were like, we're not going to give you compensation because you've just signed a player to replace Josh Battle. So basically you're picking Adam Tomlinson over like a possible top 10 pick. I think all Saints fans would probably go to the nearest bridge and jump off it. So yeah, I expect this to get done probably in like a trade situation. The Saints will probably give up a third round pick or so. I don't expect this to be too much. I don't think Melbourne will really argue too much with this. They've got a ton of other problems and situations and let's be honest here a good melbourne backline which is usually semi-healthy does not have adam tomlinson in it anymore so this is a situation that i think works both positively for melbourne and works positively for st kilda if they can make this happen and again speaking of cozy pickett we know that he apparently went into his melbourne meeting pretty upset and it seems like he wants to return home Again, this was being reported that he actually wanted to go to South Australia, which he spent a lot of his life there. It was rumored he actually had secret early negotiations with Port Adelaide earlier in the year. It was confirmed, I think, two years ago he had negotiations with Port Adelaide, and that just never happened. But I can officially tell you right now, not only does Cozzy Pickett not going to want to go to Port Adelaide, he's not going to want to go to Adelaide as well. But he wants to go to Western Australia, where it's being reported he is going to pick Fremantle as he pursues a trade. This is absolutely insane that Freo now can legitimately get Cozzy Pickett and Shea Bolton. 
The unfortunate thing is, they're going to be about two first round picks each. The fortunate thing is, you get two of the top three small forwards in the game who can both play midfield, especially Shea Bolton, and one's like 25 and one's like 24. You are getting these guys going into their prime of their careers who are going to last another probably six to eight years for your team in the AFL. This is, this is fucking crazy. Can you imagine being a defending team and knowing that you have to go against that Fremantle team, but you've got to go against now Shea Bolton and Cozzy Pickett in that forward line and having those guys are going to free up players like Michael Frederick. That is, that is fucking scary to think. And the reality is they can now have their midfield, which was already set of like Hayden Young, Angus Brayshaw, Caleb Sarong, uh, with a bunch of other players floating through there. They can now have Shea Bolton and Cozzy Pickett float through there at any time. That's, that's fucking scary. That will put hair on any Fremantle fans' balls. I legitimately just would not be surprised. Again, what are the trades going to be like to get these players? I think at the time making this video, they have 9, 10, and 16 or so. They will become 11, 12, and 18 because of the compensations and whatnot. So I think what will probably happen is they will offer Richmond 11 and 18 and maybe a future third just to make sure they do it for like Shea Bolton and maybe one of their third round picks they've got this year. That will probably happen. And then they're going to offer Cozzy Pickett and Melbourne probably pick 12 and a future first, which again, if you're Melbourne, you absolutely do. Two first round picks for Cozzy Pickett is enormous value right now, especially considering they're going into this new phase of what looks to be, could be a, a rebuild on the run, at least attempt, because uh, all of their players want to leave. Again, they've got like four players I've talked about in this video who legitimately want to leave uh, their team, which is crazy to think. Again, I don't think Richmond are going to be happy at all that they're not going to get 11 and 12 for Shea Bolton. That's what they're going to try and get. But in reality, if Fremantle offered up 11 and 17 or whatever, they're probably going to have to throw in another future third or something just to sweet talk the Tigers into getting this done. And look, five picks for those guys sound like a lot. But it's really not. This team only just missed the eight and were in the four most of the year. They only crumbled in the last four or five rounds. The thing is, if Fremantle add those two guys, get another year into this extremely good young core that they've got, the players that they drafted in the previous year or two come up, which we know they probably will. The only thing this team may have an issue with is potentially their back line. But their back line is still young. They've still got young key defenders coming through. I wouldn't be surprised if they really go out and get that, get that grand final appearance that they've been desperately trying to get for years and years, ever since 2013, where they ultimately failed to take home the cup. I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, go ahead and make this happen. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. Do you guys agree with all the trades that I've mentioned so far uh, in terms of who wins, who doesn't? Do you think they'll all happen? Whatever it may be, definitely let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Subscribe to this channel for all that sports content and news. Subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL Slack for long channels. Links for them will be in the description down below. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.